This is section 4.9, Newton's Method, and our first objective is to apply Newton's Method to solve equations. As we're doing this, I'd like you to think about other iterative processes you've encountered and be able to describe at least one other scenario in which you've encountered iterations. Our vocabulary for today is Newton's method, and this is a recursive method in which an initial guess, x sub 1, is used to determine better and better approximations to the zero of a function, f of x, by using the iterative formula below. We have x sub n plus 1 equals x sub n minus f of x sub n divided by f prime of x sub n. For our development, let's imagine for a moment that we are living in Newton's day and that calculators have not been invented. We can rely only on pen and pencil techniques to solve problems. Solving non-factorable polynomial equations with degree larger than 2 is virtually impossible as our algebraic tools for doing so are severely limited. So do we throw up our hands in despair and quit? Many did, but Newton did not. He wrestled with the issue, applying all he'd learned and developed about tangent lines, and then attacked the problem in a new way. His approach proved to be startlingly successful, and now provides the backbone upon which all computer algorithms involving solving or graphing are built. The beauty of Newton's method is that it requires only basic arithmetic skills, addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division, combined with the rudimentary concepts of derivative and tangent line. And yet it yields phenomenally accurate results with relatively few iterations. So let's see how it works and why. Consider the equation 0 equals 1 half x squared minus 3. Finding the solution to this equation is the same as finding the x-intercepts of this function, f of x equals 1 half x squared minus 3. So let's say we're interested in finding the positive solution that is between 2 and 3. Newton began this process by choosing an initial guess called x sub 1 that was close to the solution that he wanted. So let's choose x sub 1 to be 2. Now what we want to do is create a tangent line at the point 2 comma f of 2. So we'll plug 2 into the function and we will get an output of negative 1. In order to write the tangent line, we need not only the point, but also the slope. So we'll take the derivative of this, which is f prime of x equals x, and then we will evaluate at the point 2, and we'll get a slope of 2. Once we have the point and the slope, we can write the equation of the line, y equals 2 times x minus 2 minus 1. Now notice that this tangent line crosses the x-axis quite close to the x-intercept of f of x. This intercept of the tangent line will be our next guess, x sub 2. To find it, we're going to solve this equation equals 0 for x with both the explicit tangent line and the general tangent line so that we can start to see the pattern. So here is our specific tangent line. We're setting that 2 times x sub 2 minus 2 minus 1 equals 0. We can add 1, divide by 2, and then add 2. And notice that if we do the same process with the general tangent line, which was x minus x sub 1 times the tangent slope times f of x sub 1, if I isolate this x sub 2 now, I will need to add the f of x sub 1's opposite to the right hand side, and then I'll need to divide by the slope, and then I will need to add x sub 1 to both sides. So notice we could do it with the specific example, or we can do it with the pattern. And this is the pattern that we saw in the notes earlier. That next iteration, or that next guess for our solution will be x sub 1, or the previous guess, minus the output of the function that went with that x sub 1, divided by the slope of the function that goes with that x sub 1. Now, if we zoom in and apply the pattern again to our second guess, which was 2.5, we can see that this new tangent line, the blue one, is going to intersect the x-axis even closer to the real solution. And its x-intercept, x sub 3, of 2.45 can be found by computing our old guess, which was 2.5, minus the output of the function at 2.5, divided by the slope of the function at 2.5. Plug that all in, and we end up with a 2.5 using only division and subtraction. If we repeat one more time with the tangent line created by an x-coordinate of 2.45, we'll need the y-coordinate that goes with it, we'll need the slope that goes with it, and then we can write the equation of the line and solve for its x-intercept 
which will now be 2.4494897959592. Now remember that the goal was to find the zero of f of x. If we plug this into f of x, we will get an answer or an output that is very, very close to zero. And we have found a solution that is accurate to one, two, three, four, five, six decimal places, and we only used three iterations of Newton's method. So this is Newton's method of finding roots. It's an example of an algorithm, which is a specific set of computational steps, and it's also sometimes called the newton rapson method. Now Newton's method is a recursive algorithm because a set of steps are repeated with the previous answer put into the next repetition. And each repetition is called an iteration. For example one now, we want to find x sub 2 and x sub 3 if the function is given to us and our initial guess is x sub 1 equals 1. To do this we are going to go to our calculators and in our calculators we're going to put the original function x cubed minus x minus 1 into y1 and in y2 we're going to put the derivative of y1 which is 3x squared minus 1. Then on the home screen we are going to need our initial guess which is 1, we're going to need the y coordinate that goes with that and we're going to need the slope. So in our notes we are going to write that x sub 2 will be x sub 1 minus f of x sub 1 divided by f prime of x sub 1. And then we'll use the fact that x sub 1 is a 1 and f is stored in y1 whereas f prime is stored in y2. So on our calculators now we will type in 1 minus y1 of 1 divided by y2 of 1. And then to override our calculator's desire to give us a fraction or an exact value, we're going to hit diamond enter and we'll get a 1.5. So we've just discovered that x sub 2 is 1.5. We also want to find x sub 3, which according to Newton's method and the iterative process it prescribes will have x sub 2 minus f of x sub 2 divided by f prime of x sub 2. Plug that in, get x sub 2, that's our 1.5. f of x sub 2 will be y1 of 1.5 and f prime of 1.5 will be y2 of 1.5. So again, we'll go to our calculators and we will type in or overwrite, whichever, 1.5 minus y1 of 1.5 divided by y2 of 1.5. Again, hit diamond enter and we see that x sub 3 will be 1.3478. If we continue this process now with example 2, we will need to go to our calculators and plug in our new y1. And our new y2, which is the derivative of that. On the home screen now, we're ready to work with our first guess, which is x sub 1 equals 4. So we'll write down in our notes that x sub 2 will equal x sub 1 minus f of x sub 1 over f prime of x sub 1, which for this problem will be 4 minus y1 of 4 over y2 of 4 and we'll go put that into our calculators. Remember to do diamond enter to override your calculator's desire to give you an exact value and we can see that x sub 2 is 4.9. We're now going to redo this process, thus the iterative nature, and get x sub 3 is x sub 2 minus f of x sub 2 over f prime of x sub 2 and that will give us a 4.9 minus a y1 of a 4.9 
divided by a y2 of 4.9. Put that into your calculator, diamond enter, and we get 4.6443. With example 3 now, I'm asking you to find x sub 7, which means we would have to repeat the process that we've done in examples 1 and 2 five more times. And that is not the most efficient way to do this. It'll take forever. So instead, we're going to exploit the built-in memory features of our calculator to help automate the process. The first thing we're going to do is we will enter f of x into y1, just like we did before. We'll enter f prime of x into y2, which is also like we did before. And if x sub 1 is not given to you, then you will graph f and you'll look for an initial guess. And for most people, that is just a an integer that's close to the x-intercept. In this case, though, I gave you that initial guess as x sub 1 equaling 2. So this is the one we're going to use so that we all end up in the same place. Now here's where it gets different and new. We're going to take that guess that was either given to us or that we've gotten off the picture, and we're going to store it into x. And then we will overwrite x with the next guess, or x sub 2. And we will continue this process until we get the value that we want. So we have to count as we go, and we have to make sure that we hit diamond enter every time. So I'm going to show this process to you with example 3, and then I'll expect you to be able to apply it with other examples. So let's pull our calculator up. Notice that in my y editor, I have put the original equation x to the fifth minus 3x squared plus 6, and I put its derivative into y sub 2. On the home screen now, I'm going to store this 2 onto x. So I'll do 2, and then I'll use this button here that says store, and I'm going to store it onto the variable x. I hit enter, it is now stored. Now to use the iterative process and the storing feature to get x sub 2, I'm going to now write or type x minus y1 of x divided by y2 of x. What this is doing is it is now going to compute this x minus y1 of x divided by y2 of x for this given value of 2 that is stored onto that variable x. So if I store again back onto x, it will overwrite the 2 with the next guess. Now again, we have to be careful to get the decimal approximation. So I'm going to hit diamond enter. This is now x sub 2. Notice that my home screen has the last entry. So if I hit diamond enter again, there's x sub 3, there's x sub 4, x sub 5, x sub 6, and x sub 7. I have my answer is 2.574 3, 9, 1, etc., etc. So you can write that in your notes that x sub 7 is 2.5744. Now notice, if we continue through this process, we've repeated by hitting enter until we got the iteration we wanted, but now when we're done, we need to make sure that we clear the stored value of x, because we want x to be used as a variable instead of as the number that is currently stored in x, which is 2.5744. So to do that on a TI-89, we are going to press second F1, and that takes us into the cleanup menu, and we can clear our A to Z. You can double check that it has been cleared by typing x and seeing that it gives you an x back instead of a number. With example 4 now, we are going to find where one curve crosses another curve accurate to six decimal places. So this is a nuance that will show up in your notes web exam problems and in your randomized web exam problems because Newton's method only works if you're looking for the zeros. So that means we need to somehow create a zero out of this function crossing this one. Well, notice that's going to be when 1 equals this or when f of x, which is x squared minus x plus 2, equals 0. If I subtract 1 from both sides, I'm going to get a function that needs to equal 0. So this is what I will put in my calculator for y1. So let's pull our calculators out. Notice in y1, I have x cubed minus x plus 2. And in y2, I've put the derivative of that, which is 3x squared minus 1. I'm going to turn off f4, and I'm going to graph y1, because in this case, I did not give you x sub 1. So we need to choose it. And looking here, I see that the curve f of x crosses 
the x-axis between negative 2 and negative 1. So I can choose either one of those as my initial guess. So let's let negative 2 be our initial guess. So on the home screen, I'm going to take that negative 2 and I'm going to store it onto x. Then I'm going to do x minus y sub or y1 of x divided by y2 of x and I'm going to store that back onto x. My goal is to get six decimal accuracy and I want to make sure that I'm using diamond enter the entire time. So diamond enter and I'm going to keep doing this until I see six decimals that are no longer changing. So if I look right now, these first six decimals are different. So that means I have not gone enough times. So here's my fourth time. Here's my fifth time. And notice that I'm already to six decimal accuracy. That 521379, 521379, I actually have seven decimal accuracy and I only had to do Newton's method five times. So our solution will be x equals negative 1.521-3797. The next thing I want you to be aware of is that sometimes Newton's method doesn't work. So you have to be careful in making a good choice. Say for example we have this picture. We can see that if we're looking for this root and we make a bad guess, then Newton's method can narrow us down to the other root and we'll find the wrong one. Another place that we will have issues is when we fail to converge, when those tangent lines get me further and further and further away. So Newton's method is very good in most situations, but when we encounter things like this, we have to use other methods and that'll come up in later college courses.